Before this video starts, if you guys want to support me and want to have access to all of my project files that includes the maps, the models and the scripts, they will all be available on my Patreon in the $10 tier. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go to start a player or start a pack, uh, select the rock and enter rock client. Now what we're going to do is uh, make a uh, server side debounce and also uh make the um tree breaking a little bit better by instead of using touch the vent we're gonna use magnitude to check if the player is close enough to the tree so what i'm gonna do is remove the uh, uh swinging variable up here the debounce tree variable and the normal debounce and then i'm going to remove all of these debounce variables so debounce is equal to false remove that swinging remove that remove this too and remove all of this now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create a function now that function is going to be actually i also need to remove this end right here and i'm just going to format this okay so we're going to have a function called uh hit tree now this function will take the tree that we want to hit so what i'm going to do whenever we play the swinging animation uh before we do that we're gonna need to check if the cooldown is false or true so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to add a folder inside of replicated storage and inside that folder we're gonna have um oh what is this okay so inside inside that folder we're gonna have uh all of the remotes that we're gonna have so i'm going to call it remotes and i'm going to add a remote function to it okay so i'm going to call this um hit tree and what I'm going to do whenever we do this, we're going to do local result, local debounce is equal to, or maybe local can swing is equal to, um, rem uh, replicate a storage, call and wait for child, rem actually replicate a storage dot remotes dot hit tree, call and fire, call and uh, invoke server. Sorry, call and invoke server, and that's going to take the player. Okay, so. Now what we need to do is add enter the main server script and what I'm going to do is create a reference to replicated storage so local replicated local replicated storage is equal to game call get service replicated storage now in here I'm going to create a table so local debounce table is equal to an empty table and what I'm going to do whenever a player joins, we're going to put the player inside of that table. So debounce table, square brackets, player is equal to true. So we're going to set it to false, sorry, not true. So false. So the debounce will be false by default. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a reference to the remote folder. So local remotes is equal to replicated storage dot remotes and remotes dot uh, hit tree dot on server invoke is equal to function and that's going to take the player and what we're gonna do is check if not debounce table square brackets player then so the debounce is false then what we're gonna do is task dot spawn function and debounce table is equal uh, square brackets player is equal to true now we're gonna wait the debounce uh, duration so 0.7 maybe 0.7 seconds and debounce table square brackets player will be set to false now we are using task.spawn because we don't we want to return true before we even uh, before we wait for the debounce to finish because that does not make any sense so now we're going to add an else and else we're going to return false so i'm going to go back to my rock client script and i'm going to check if can swing then so if we can swing then we will swing the sword i mean the uh, tool sorry so now what i'm gonna do is use this hit tree function so just copy all of this so copy starting from tree.health.value to uh, uh to the end of this if statement and i'm going to paste it right here now what i'm gonna do is Okay, so tree dot health of value. I think that's that's all we need to do. Yep, that's all we need. I'm going to remove this, and we're gonna call that function. So what I'm gonna do is loop through 
for underscore quantity in comma tree, sorry, comma tree, in pairs, and we're gonna loop through the breakable trees that we have. So we're gonna create a reference to all of our breakable trees. So local breakable trees is equal to workspace colon wait for child breakable trees. Now what we're gonna do is for underscore comma tree in pairs breakable trees or just in breakable trees colon get children do. And what we're gonna do is check if uh, brackets and we're gonna check if tool dot handle dot position minus hit dot primary uh, i mean uh, tree dot primary part dot position dot magnitude magnitude is less or equal to three or maybe four then so if the player uh, if the tool is uh, less than four less or equal to four studs away from the tree then uh, hit tree uh, tree and break now what i'm gonna do is play the game and see if all this works okay so i'm going to uh, use my rock and i'm going to try to break this and as you can see it does in fact work because when i click works and it's also server-sided now and also it's a lot more precise actually less precise which is better because we don't have to to be really really close and touching the tree so i can just do it like this see uh, you can lower that distance if you want if you think that's unrealistic you can change this to like two or something but i'm going to keep it at four and what i'm going to do is prepare the inventory ui so that we can sc script it in the next episode so I'm going to show you how we're going to set up UI for this game. And it's actually very simple. Add a screen GUI to start a GUI. And rename it to main SS for main sc screen GUI. And I'm going to have a big frame that's going to contain big frames that have the that have main frames. Uh, that sounds confusing, but it's actually pretty simple. So just change the size of this frame to 1, 0, 1, 0. Now I'm going to change the background transparency to 1 and make sure that it's visible. So the next thing we're going to do is duplicate this frame. Actually, before we do that, we're going to rename it to frames and we're going to duplicate it. Now put it inside of frames and set its size, its anchor point this time to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. If you just type in 0 0.5, it will set it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay, so now we're going to change the position to 0 0.5, comma 0, comma 0 0.5, comma 0. That's going to center it. Now, what we just did is set its anchor point to the center so that when we want to tween this, it will tween it uh, from the center, not from the corner. So it's not going to be like this. It's going to be from the center. So it's going to look way cooler. Now, what we're going to do is rename this to the name of your frame for me it's going to be inventory so inventory and what i'm going to do is uh i'm going to add a frame to it and that's going to be the actual frame so i'm going to call it main frame now the, re the reason why we did all of this is so that we when we want to tween something we don't have to get the specific size of each frame we can just say it set it to either 0 0.0 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0 or 1 comma 0 comma 1 comma 0 so we don't have to to uh resize each thing so we can just change the visibility of this inventory frame and everything will work and we can also just change the size very easily we don't have to memorize any size of each frame okay i'm gonna get i'm gonna get back to my main frame and i'm going to change its size from offset to scale so that, so that it scales properly on any device so just change its size to 0 0.1 comma 0 comma 0 0.1 comma 0 and then you can resize it however you want now and it will stick to scale instead of offset now i'm going to have a decently sized frame and i'm going to position it right here in the center and I'm going to make the background color a dark gray. So something like this would be pretty nice. Okay, so now I'm going to add a UI corner to it. And I'm going to change the corner radius to 0 0.03, 0. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a um, scrolling frame to it. 
and it's going to be around this size actually i'm going to say set its anchor point to 0 0.5 and set its position to 0 0.5 comma 0 comma 0 0.5 comma 0 and i'm going to change its size to uh, 0 0.85 comma 0 comma 0 point uh, comma 0 point 9 comma 0 uh, comma 0 point or oh, what uh, 0 point so 0 point mm, 0 point 8 comma 0 8 comma 0 comma 0 point um, 9 comma 0 and then I can just resize it on the X so I can change this to 0 point 9 I think that looks pretty nice now I'm also going to okay that's I think that, I think that's a bit too much on the uh, on the y so actually it's on the x so maybe this should be 0 0.95 okay, that's perfect now i'm going to change the background transparency to one and the scroll bar thickness or the scroll uh okay scroll bar thickness to maybe um five and i'm also going to change the border size pixel to zero and we are also going to change its so we're gonna set the canvas the uh there's okay automatic canvas size change this to y and it should work now what i'm gonna do is okay so we've set up our scrolling frame now we can have anything inside of the scrolling frame so for me it's going to be a template so i'm going to add a text button and it's going to be i'm going to also add a ui grid layout now for the ui grid layout i'm just going to to firstly duplicate my text button and i'm going to select my ui grid layout and i'm going to change its uh cell size or first of all um start corner and actually no it's called uh, horizontal alignment and it's just going to be center and full direction fill direction okay horizontal that's okay now it's perfect now i'm going to change the cell size to something bigger so on the x I want the offset to be zero and on the Y the offset to be zero. Now I want the size on the X to be 0 0.1 and actually 0 0.2 and the size on the Y to be 0 0.0 actually 0 0.09. Oh that's that's really bad. 0 0.335 maybe. Okay, 35 0 0.03 0 0.35 is perfect and 0 0.2 on the scale. Now we need to change the cell padding. So I'm just going to select this and offset zero, offset zero, of course. And on the X, it's going to be 0 0.03 or 0 0.02, 0 0.01. And on the Y, 0 0.02 or 0 0.03 or 0 point. 0.25 and yep that's perfect now again the size of the scrolling frame i don't really like it so i could i could just mess around with the cell size again so maybe i can lower it on the x but i don't want to i don't really want to do that actually i'm gonna do it never mind i'm just going to use one Okay, so I'm going to add a UI corner to my text button, and I'm going to set its corner radius to 0 0.1, 0, and or maybe 0 0.05, 0, and I'm going to change the background color to a nice, um, maybe very dark gray, and I'm going to change the text to nothing so text to nothing and then we can have a uh, text label inside of this and we can change the text or the size sorry to one on the x comma zero comma zero point one comma zero so now we have it resized correctly now we can just change its position so position on the y to be one or maybe zero zero point eight or something okay that's perfect now we're going to change the background transparency to one text color to white and the text scaled property to true and we are also going to change the font so 
font. I want a nice looking font, so I'm probably going to go with um maybe what what is this font? Be this. I think it looks pretty clean. So I might go with this. Or it does not really match the style of the game, so maybe okay, I'm just going to end up going with for Doka one. And now I'm going to change the text to for example rock. And now we can then have a viewport frame, or maybe we can make this bigger. I don't know. Okay, that's that's good. Now we can add a viewport frame to the text button. So viewport frame, and we're gonna change its size to one, comma zero, comma one, comma zero. Anchor point, zero point five. Position, zero point five, comma zero. Comma 0 0.5, comma 0. Background transparency, 1, and that's that should be it. Now we are done with this, and I'm going to rename this to template. Okay, so that's the inventory UI it's made, not scripted yet. Now I'm going to have a text button that's going to be placed in here for opening up this inventory. So I'm just going to place it in here, change its size to... 0 0.1 comma 0 comma 0 0.1 comma 0 and then I can resize it and it will stick to scale and I can just position it add the UI corner set its corner radius to 0 0.1 comma 0 then we can just position it again and I'm going to change the background color to the background color of this. So background color, copy, and paste it in here. And the text scale properly to true. And the text color to white. And for the text, maybe I will just have an inventory icon. I'll see. So let's see if I got any backpack emoji. Maybe. Okay, I'll check for backpack emoji. Or never mind, I'll just type in inventory, inventory, and text scaled true, um, font again for Doka one. And yeah, I think that's what we're going to do for now. Okay, so now we can uh, make the inventory invisible, not the main frame, the inventory frame. And I think that's going to be it for today's tutorial. If this helped, please subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.